G'day guys, welcome back to the Rugby League Guru Podcast. I was lucky enough to jump on this week once again with Denham Kemp and Brett Finch on the Bloke in a Bar podcast to talk about the fan poll that came out in the last 24 hours. You heard me talk about it earlier today on the Rugby League Guru Podcast. This is a really good opportunity to sit down with Kempy and Finchy and go through all of these results. Now, I broke this podcast, it goes for an entire two hours, so I broke it down into three bits, which you'll see over the next 24, 48 hours. The first bit today is sort of our introduction part and we talk about not the fan vote but about a few things that were going on in rugby league over the last few days a really good deep chat that I think you'll like the topics of Payne Haas that deal that's been going on for the last few days that has just been an absolute roller coaster we talk about Jaden Campbell re-signing with the Gold Coast Titans a massive get for them we also talk about the future of Mitchell Pearce he has been linked to a move to the Catalan Dragons over in the Super League those are the three topics we touch on here guys it's about a 30 minute chat uh, between myself Self, Kempy and Finchy. Stay tuned. Over the next 24 hours, we'll have part one and part two of the fan vote. If you'd like to get a little head start on that, it will be available on Bloke in a Bar podcast this afternoon. It might even be available now. I think it's premiering on YouTube as we see, speak. So another good innings there, about two hours or so. Plenty of content coming from this podcast over the next few days. For now, though, I'll hand you over to the audio from Bloke in a Bar's podcast. Just a Bloke in a Bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Bloke in a Bar, brought to you by the best beer in the history of mankind. Some say made by aliens, but it wasn't. It was made by a bloke that is my mate. We sat down. He's a brewer. We, we got all of his competitors. We did a blind taste testing. So you, you basically sipped, sipped the beer, then you gave it a rating out of 10. We kept sending it back until it got the best rating out of 10. That's how you know it's a good beer. Also, next Wednesday, 6 p.m., Bloke merch dropping the first official Hello Sport Bloke Partnership shirt being dropped next Wednesday, 6 p.m. And also Bloke hoodies, tanned hoodies. So if you missed out last week, make sure to be there Wednesday, 6 p.m. Don't miss out, guys. Be there. Join the Bloke Club free. We'll send out a text um, when it goes live. So if you go to www.bloke.club, you can join the Bloke Club for free. We give out free stuff all the time. So... Uh, make sure to do all that. But I have the great guru, rugby Lou guru. I have the great Finchman. Finchman, you've got some, something to talk about too, don't you? Yeah, I do, mate. Just quickly off the top before we get into it. Um, funded by all the players' associations under the Australian Athletes Allegiance, which is the NRL cricket, mm. uh, NRLW, uh, the basketball, the netball. Uh, there's a documentary coming out called Living the Dream. It's on Fox Sports, 5 7 It's on uh, Friday at 8 40. And obviously this Saturday, 7.30 in the morning and 12.30 at lunchtime. Um, it's, it's talking first about mental health. It's talking about living the dream How You know, everyone, what we see behind the scenes, look, people struggle. Um, uh, when, when careers are cut short through injury or retirement or, or um, other mental health uh, issues through their career. And there's some really good uh, former athletes on there. Liz Ellis, Matt Delavadova, Luke Longley, oh, who, really? who's a pretty... Uh, shy sort of guy, and, and he mm. reached out the absolute heights. A couple of blokes you know, Carmichael Hunt and Darius Boyd, who have yep. had, had uh, well spoken about and been really good in this area. Um, GWS captain Phil Davis, Ali Brigginshaw, uh, the NRLW champion, and obviously Shane Watson, the cricketer. So mm. a whole lot more, but it's really good. Um, just talking about the, the glitz and the glamour in the life everyone thinks they see, you know, mm. talks about the, how these athletes are certainly. Um, they can just as easily uh, struggle with the same things that you know, yep. everyone else does. So it's a, it's a really good documentary, and um, I advise everyone, if they get a chance to, I'll watch it Fox Sports uh, Friday night. It should be on, it'll be on KO as well, I'm KO, sure. I'm sure it will yeah. be, yeah. The Guru. You got anything going on, Guru, or what? Oh, mate, I'm still recovering from our four-hour innings the other day. <laughs> oh, wow. My missus was almost putting us on the side of milk cartons. We were gone forever <laughs> there. But, uh, mate, the response seems to be good. I yep. re-watched as much of it as I could. It was mm. good, mate. I enjoyed it. So glad to be back. Mate, it's uh, it's funny actually. I put it on just to make sure it was like you know premiere and good and that. I actually sat there and watched it for a bit, and, I, and that's when I messaged you. I said, "This is actually fucking all right, <laughs> yeah. boys. Fuck, we did, we did all right." Now it's um, the feedback was really good. So, 
that was a, a mammoth session, but it didn't really feel like four hours, honestly. Not at all. No, it went really well, obviously. Talking about <laughs> footy always goes, pretty, especially at the moment, not yep. getting to pubs and whatnot. But mm. no, it was unreal. Enjoyed it. Um, so make sure to watch that documentary, which is it's it's made by the Players Association. Yes. So it's, all the it, Players Associations yeah. in, in Australia. So. Okay, so make sure to watch that. But the reason for this podcast is I thought we'd do a special. Recently, the fan vote has been taken. So all the fans have got together. I think it's about 28,000 people across 34, uh, 34 topics. So these are all NRL fans. And they were asked questions like, who's the best player? It's on NRL.com. Uh, and it's held in conjunction with Delhi Telegraph and the Career Mail. So if you want to go and look at these results, go to NRL.com. But we thought we'd go through those results, give our opinion. Do we agree with the fans? Do we not agree with the fans? Um, plus also talk about some of the current topics. Now, one of the biggest current topics is Hass signs a six-year deal with the Broncos, but then nine come out and say it's not true. Then the Broncos come out and release a statement and say, we're currently working through it, but everything that was released last night is not true. So Haas has not signed a six-year deal. That is actually the story. The story is Haas hasn't signed a six-year deal. Did you see that? And what are your thoughts on it? Rugby league, huh? <laughs> oh, my God. The circus continues. Mm. Yes, we, um, we do things differently, don't they? We're sort of just waiting. <laughs> you know, always oh. try, there's always someone trying to jump the gun or get the story instead yeah. of just waiting. Obviously, it looks like he's going to be in Brisbane, which is great news for the Broncos because he is an absolute superstar. Mm. Um, you know, let's just cool our, cool our jets, and I'm sure, you know, it'll be some sort of long-term deal. Mm. You probably know Kempe, um, you know, you've got your ear to the ground up there, but the main thing is that he stays in, stays with the Broncos because he's, he's an absolute superstar. Mate, I'll tell you what, the one thing, you, if this was information that got leaked from the higher-ups of the Broncos, that's how you ruin deals. Yeah. So if that is the case and they were trying to maybe strong arm him or, or whatever, don't we, we at the Broncos we never used to need to use those tactics. Yeah. Um, you know, I've I've heard that a big part of the reason for, that Fafita left was because of the fucking circus Jeez. that happened with the whole Titans thing. Remember when he was staying and he was going and he was mm-hmm. staying and then one morning there was a fucking you know, the Broncos basically saying, Yep, we've got him and that was part of the reason why Fafita was like, "What? Well, like, have, like, let's respect yeah. the fucking process here." Mm. And so I hope, I hope that that wasn't the Broncos trying to release the information, which pressures him into signing it. Because Haas, he, he's not going to be pressured. And he's anything. got him lining up around the corner. Yeah, the, the suitors they would be happy for him to pull on the jumper for he, for uh, their club. He's um, well, you, know, you got the top percent. You got good players, and then there's the, the cream. And mm. he's he's if he's not there, he will be for the next. You know, Extended period of his, of his career, he's a superstar. They can't possibly mess this one up. I mean, off the back of getting Reynolds, if they miss out on Haas, it's two steps forward, one step back, essentially, yep. isn't it? Like, oh, mate. Two what steps be, forward, eight steps no, back. Yeah, it's it's loss. Yeah. Do you, so what do you think about the Haas long-term deal? Like, if you, there's, the 10-year deal was touted. I actually said that um, it's not good for both parties, but especially Haas. I think that if you're Haas, you'd... He is such a next generation, like, un- like could be anything. We've never seen anything like it. I think it'd be crazy to take a long-term deal. What are your thoughts on a long-term deal? Yeah, I, I agree. I think if, if I'm the Broncos, I don't think I want Payne Haas there. I, I, I want him there that long, but I want him to re-earn his contract mm. every couple of years. I mean, you see guys coming off contract and, you know, you know, if he signs for the next two years and he only improves, you want him to know that he can make more money off the back of that. I, I think it's the best way to go. Mm. I'm not... I, I would never sign anyone for more than four years, I don't think, anymore. No, it's, and it's not even part of four. Mate, the game could be totally different in 10 years. Yeah. 2011. I was still playing in 2011. The game was yep. totally different. Yep. Um, interchanges, h- how the game was refereed, mm-hmm. the rules, mm. um, the type of player that was yep. important, you know. Mm. It, I, I just think it's... At the same time, though, I reckon the game is only moving towards Payne Haas. Oh, but but you can't. How, we could not predict where we're at now. Ten years, like mm. it's no. I don't think there's any read. Like, why did I sign him? Before? I signed three year deal and two years in his favour. Mm. Four year, like yeah. mm. it won't exactly. You keep him hungry. Yeah. You're going to give him enough money to. He's not going to miss out financially. Mm. Um, I just think the game. How how you can predict where the game's going to be in ten years time? Yeah. Like, uh, well, it's like a perfect example is this: 2005, West Tigers, smaller forward backs start diving to the ground. Basically turns a touch footy. 2006, the master, Bellamy says, hey, fuck that shit. Mm. I don't want those blokes diving at the ground. How do, the refs aren't going to help us. We'll start wrestling so they can't just get up and play the ball. Mm. So the game gets slower and slower and slower. 2012 hits. Would you ever think when in the 2012-13 rolled around that we would, by this stage, 2021, be getting back to the Tigers footy? I don't think anyone could have predicted nah. that. 
Um, oh, I can't can predict where we're going to be in ten years' time. Yeah, so right. it's uh, it's it, it is interesting. I, I think the I understand the thought process of the Broncos are a club that are desperate to like rebuild into something, but I feel like hold your guns. Like mm. I, I, we we if if Hass is only going to sign because he gets a ten year deal, is that? Isn't that a bit concerning, you know, for club culture and, and everything? I, again, I understand where the idea comes from because it could be anything. But even Haas as well, like, surely Haas wants to be at the club. He seems like he's grown into a leader. I think anything Five, five years is a long time. Yeah, five long years is plenty. plenty. Five years is massive. Even on the other side of the ball, you don't know what could happen to Payne Haas in the next spot. I mean, if he runs out next week and does an ACL, yeah. Yeah. it's a different football. Yeah, it, it's wood. a tough one. But if, if they don't sign him long term, they know someone else will. Yeah. So... Yeah, and I guess that is the, the, the concern is, is is not necessarily the the club loyalty or culture or whatever. It's more the market pressure, the pressure of you know Tigers might come in and say, "Here's ten years, fucking a million dollars," but it's also a percentage to the cap or some crazy. Like look what happened with Manly um, and the Titans with with uh, DCE. Like they had this great deal. It was like five six years. It was done deal everything, and then Manly just offered him such a monster deal. That he was like, you know what, I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of my integrity to do that deal kind of thing. Um, and you know what? Even though it was, I personally wouldn't have done it that, like I would have gone to the Titans, um, it was actually career-wise the right decision for DCE. Yeah, like far and away. Yep. yep. So you can't, like, who was who was right in the end? Even though, you know, ethically you could argue, rah, 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 but at the end of the day, I, t- he was I right. tell you, when ethics can get thrown out the window, there's about 10 million in front yeah. of you. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty, you know, and mate, the kids, he, the young, DC's got young kids, got a family. I totally understand uh, Gold Coast's position on that, but I reckon not one. Oh, well, I, I know, would, I, I, see, I can only speak for myself. I wouldn't. Yeah. If I, I would got that in front of me and I've got a young family, I'm more than happy to I, I, cut I, a bit of slack for a while. I would have gone, I reckon. I, I would have, you know, I, I, it was much smaller money, but that happened with me, the Warriors. Like, I didn't even sign the contract, I just agreed verbally through my manager. And then got offered much bigger contracts with other clubs, like hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I still went on the much smaller Warriors contract because I'd said already said yes. And I was actually legally, uh, like, I, I could have just said, oh, no, nah, I changed my mind. I hadn't signed anything, hadn't even yeah. agreed to them face-to-face. But I understand, I, I agree with the sentiment that anyone that says they don't understand why DC did it, and anyone that would say, oh, I wouldn't even think about doing it, you're talking shit. I like... I absolutely do not begrudge DCE making that decision. What do you reckon? Oh, if I'm working at Coles and Woolworths offers me a big contract and Coles says I'll give you more, yeah. mm. see it, Coles. <laughs> like, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I, I, I get where you're, you're coming from. You're the fresh food people? No, fresh food. No, thank <laughs> you. Yeah, I'll, be, I'll be at Coles. But it's... Yeah, I mean... I'm an Aldi. I can't afford either of them. <laughs> I'm not for cheap as an Aldi. Yeah, I, I don't know how you could... Possibly argue that you don't understand why. DC oh, that'd be did fucking did, crazy. You know? So anyone that yeah. begrudges him that decision, I think you're just you yeah. you are not living in reality. Yeah. Not living in reality because uh, you know, aside from the the, the finer details, it was the right decision. Yeah. It was absolutely the right decision. Um, but uh, with 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 Hass, uh, yeah. Look, I think five year deal. He's already shown his loyalty. He signed a six year deal, much under market value now, like way under market value. Haven't heard a peep from him. He continues to rock up and absolutely rip in. Yeah. He, he's still got three, uh, two years left on. Oh, mm. three. Yeah, he's still got three years left on his deal, and he is ripping and tearing. So, well, man, that's that's the best thing is about him, and that's where I, you know, I think for feeders, like mate, for feeders got talent. But right now, for feeders getting paid on talent mm. on what he can do. Has is earning every cent and more. Mm. You know, he, he's well, dominated mate. Origin. He's he's virtually carrying a club side for full. You know. Yeah, um, I think I think Fafita has been. It's it hasn't been as bad as the doomsayers have said, but it also I agree that he needs to be week in week out. Fuck at the yeah. tippity top. Well, of, like of like the, this bloke's this Payne House is for a young fella. Um, he's outstanding. Mm. You know, not yeah. only is he a physical specimen, but his will to win and competitiveness, is incredible. which is the most important thing, is yeah. unbelievable. The amount of times I've seen him carry the first play like Bradley Clyde used to. I've seen him run down and tackle people from behind. It's the mindset. Uh, you know, that's that's why he's so important to that club. You know, on top of obviously his natural ability, you know, his competitiveness, and well, how, how he goes about it, he's super consistent and well, he's a leader. You don't see genetic freaks like that with that no. attitude. Like you just don't. You him, just, and, him and Tom Trevojevic are just yeah. totally different, aren't they? They're crazy. 
for how big and skillful they are and yep. and their footy players. And like without bagging Dave for feeder, I mean, their season's on the line tonight. He's sitting on the bench. Mm. I mean, I, I, you, if Brisbane's season was on the line tonight, is Payne Haas even considered uh. on the pine? Like, uh. no, nah, that's a good point. That's a good point. I um. Yeah, like I, I, def, I, I definitely agree with you. Like that's yeah. that he shouldn't be on the bench. He should be on the fucking field killing it. Um, but in saying that, you go, you go back six weeks ago. He was actually, you know, delivering, like changing the match, um, you know, impacting the game quite substantially. So I'm somewhere in the middle on that. Like I, I agree that there should be more, but I also don't think people that are like, oh, what a fucking terrible buy this that, and the next thing because they are, you know, at the end of the day, they are fighting for finals footy, and that was the goal. Mm. Um, I think, and I said it with uh, on my show with Cameron Smith yesterday. Um, here is a real good opportunity for Fafida to step up and take and accept the mantle of. I don't care how young I am; I am the guy now. Well, it doesn't help when now you got Peachy at five eight. Who Peachy refuses to pass the ball. Peach. <laughs> well, Peachy's not. A, he's a runner. Yeah, he's a. I played with Peachy Cronulla in reserve grade, mate. Mm. The amount of times he dummied to me with the line wide open. I was old at that stage. I was yeah. trying to get trained. <laughs> but so there's two new halves there. So uh, we've seen how, certainly in the recent weeks, his lack of involvement. Mm. And, and a lot of that depends on people inside him, you know, because mm. he's a back row. So it'll be interesting to see tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, just like I said, Sexton and... Well, Sexton and Ash Taylor aren't in the team this week. Yeah. I mean, of all the weeks to drop Ash Taylor... Jeez, over the last yeah. few years. I don't know if this is the week, to be honest with you. He went oh, 24 man. weeks. <laughs> what luck. Like yeah. He made some life. crucial errors last week. Yeah. Like, oh, I get Holbrook's thinking, but I know what you mean. Like, of all the weeks, season on the line, even if he did make errors last week, it's like, well, fuck, he's been there, so he's got the combinations. Um, but there were a couple of times last week, like, they were building mad, like, mm. great pressure on Storm, and then he just come up with this error, and you're going, what? Like, mm. but, but even if they drop Ash Taylor, if you put Sex in, I go, okay, but you didn't put Sex in. You yeah. put Tyrone Peachy in. Yeah, it's a fair point. I, I, I don't know, just... We'll, we'll soon see. Maybe it's a master stroke. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, oh, fuck. I think it's a win if they make finals, but it also is a little bit of a Band-Aid because they haven't gone as good as they What's should have this year. Yeah. I think, you know, like... Look, they should be... If, 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 they, if their goal wasn't finals, mm. like, waste sent and they... I don't understand how people... Your goal is to win a comp every year mm. or give your money back to your supporters, like... You know, or like, and you're right. Even if they limp into eighth, they're going to lose two or three more games than they've won. That's yeah. not successful. No, nah, so. Um, and I'm sure the whole book. He's been Titsy's been quite honest with it mm. the whole time. And mate, they're a better team than what they've shown because at yeah. their best, they're a high power. Mm. Yeah, they got a high powered offense. Um, obviously, defense is something they've got to work on. But geez, when they put it together, they're a hard team to beat. They put like twenty or thirty, or like twenty four or something on the. With on Manly on yeah. Rabbitohs yeah. in the first half, like so they got it. But well, Melbourne now they, they led twelve. Yeah, Melbourne, Melbourne so they've got it in them. It's just that eighty minutes. But, um, but I also point. like if you look back to last year, I think the Sharks finished eighth, and everyone said they're the worst team to ever make finals. Mate, I take that Sharks team last oh, yeah, year. 100%. The Titans right now. <laughs> yeah, fucking no doubt it. about it. Like Absolutely. I think they're, they're lucky. It's twenty twenty one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I agree. Um, so on the Titans, uh, Jaden Campbell extends. Uh, we spoke about it only a week. I thought he was one of the hottest property on the, the market, especially when you're looking for – if you were looking for a fullback. So I think this is an incredibly good re-signing. I think they would have got him for relatively cheap, um, the loyalty factor, and I think that they're probably just going to play him fullback and Brimo at six. Because yeah. I could see Brimo being long-term six, you know? Well, he's got consistency, doesn't yeah, he? And he has but a dig, you know? That's one thing they have struggled with and Ta- Ash Taylor's struggled with, and I've, I've certainly been there as a young half, is mm. consistency. And certainly when you're paying a lot of money, uh, he's on a lot of money. So I think Brimson physically can handle it. He's a solid enough kid. And Campbell, well, he's only played four or five games. Two of those games have been against the Storm and he mm. stood out in both of them. So you're not going to get a tougher test than that. And he comes from a great stock. So you know, I certainly think that's the combination going forward. That's the thing. He plays his best footy against the best sides. Uh, There's not many guys like that in the competition anymore, realistically. Mm. Obviously... I don't know. For, for me as a fan, having the Campbell last name, I mean, when I think Titans, I still think Preston. Mm. I think, it, you know, I think that, that sort of stuff matters. I, I think it's just a perfect narrative, really. I think Matt Peterson when I think Titans. Sideshow <laughs> Bob. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, you're right, but he's... I think the Don flying the down the Don. Wing. I thought you were going to say Chrissy Walker for a second. No, I was going to say Texas. I think Texas with a lot of other things. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, great signing. Really good signing. And getting him... 
Getting him just before he hits that hype level where you're going, oh fuck! Now we're going to pay six hundred k for so him. That, so that's that's how you that's how you handle your cap. Mm. You get him now for four years. Yeah, yeah. So you get him under. So if you let him go for another, if you're going for two years, mm. you may be coming in in two years' time for. Oh. Fuck. What, five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand. Yeah, when it, you it, get him now, you can get him for four years at three hundred thousand. You know yeah. what I mean? It's you and know, timing is you know, it's, a, it's a tough beast to handle to the salary cap, but like timing's all about it, and, and knowing when players are coming off and, and what mm. your, your cap's going to look like when he's coming off. So, and how much like Teddy and Tommy are inflating that fullback of course cost? Mate. If you can get a fullback like a, a top tier fullback at like four hundred k. That's yeah. so good. Hey, for you, your cap. you might have to overpay him next year, so you give him three fifty next year. But if he's four hundred for the next mm. couple of years after that, by that stage, that could be oh. very well under. Well, look at Dylan Edwards, yeah. Penrith yeah. Panthers. They're, they're a grand final side with Dylan Edwards at fullback. And just thinking off the dome here, we spoke the other day about the Titans that they need a hooker. Could this mean you could move maybe Jamal Fogarty to nine, play yep. Sexton at seven? I mean, right. it opens up a couple of options. You've obviously got two halves competing. Like competition for a position like halfback, I think is unreal to have mm. in your club as well. So. Mate, I, I, I really like the idea of Fogarty at nine because I just think he's a calm head, works really hard, he's going to get good service, he's going to go to the right person. Um, I think they should try it. I, maybe, there's, maybe they've seen something that we haven't for not putting them there, but um, yeah, great signing now. Latest maybe Fogarty's seen something that we haven't, that's making 30 tackles a game. <laughs> <laughs> Latest rumour flying around, Pierce to Cattle and Dragons. Now, this could be absolute nonsense, so take it with a grain of salt. Thoughts? I think it would be a big loss for the NRL. We already don't have enough sevens as it is. I can throw a dart out the window and hit a team that needs a halfback at the moment. And, mm. geez, Pierce would fit the bill at Canberra, Cronulla, uh, a heap of clubs for me. So I hope he doesn't go. I think Pierce has still got a lot more to offer. And I also think Pierce is well aware of the records that he could have in front of him as far as games played. Mm. Um, he's flying into that 300 club and... I mean, he's one guy that oh, I don't know how old he is now, but the longer so guys are going, 31, 32. 31, yeah, okay. And what he, I think he's played two hundred and eighty odd first grade games. Played oh, he's played three hundred already, hasn't played he? Played three hundred this year, mate. Fuck, I'd, yeah, I, I'd be staying if I was Piercy. Yeah. But as you said before to me, money talks, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah bloody hell. I, I just think there's going to be clubs out here willing to pay him plenty. You know, and obviously if his body's holding up already, train. He's an exceptional trainer. He trains as hard and as fit as any player I've seen. Uh, how his body's holding up. Like he can still, like you said, there's 80, 80% of clubs would take him, you know what I mean? In a heartbeat and still mm. pay good money Without for him. Without a doubt. Yep. You know, being one of his good mates, I'd love for him to go to Catalans because that's where I'm going, where I'm going for <laughs> summer next year. I might have to take a couple of weeks off, Kempi. Put France. it in the contract. Finch means we Get the white rig out on the beaches, <laughs> Matty, you know what I mean? They get this grass rig out. Finchy does Europe. Uh, oh, Finchy's done Europe a few times. <laughs> <laughs> Different um, type of fast doing it back then, but. You're right, he, he, he's still playing good footy. You know, obviously there's Ponga, but Newcastle can't win without him, so I don't know why Newcastle would yeah. want to let him go. And there's nothing coming through there. Um, the, the lack of... And, you know, the patience with halves these days, there's... there's huh. You know, not many clubs are giving a half back, mate. Here you go, you've got two or three years to build your, your game, you know, so they want... Well, they say it to you. No. They don't yeah, do they it. They don't actually do yeah. it. Two or three, they give you two or three they weeks. Give you two or three yeah. weeks, yeah. Um, now, I'm going so, to be a cynic. I'm going to yeah. be a massive cynic. You're Mitchell Pearce. You've, you've won a premiership. Of course. Won Origin. You're sitting at the Knights. And you're going, in reality, they're probably not going to win a premiership no in the chance. next three years. In reality. Um, they may. Like, uh, again, I, I think they've... If you took, like, Storm Roosters' culture and then put it on that team, they probably could win a comp. I, I do think their roster... Yeah, I think there's still a few pieces away, yeah, but you're right. But, like, they've... Like, I, I think worse rosters have challenged for a grand final. So it's not to say they, they definitely can't, but probability-wise, they're not going to. So you're sitting there, you're a uh, PSC, and you're like, I've got a one-year deal. They've already kind of tried to yeah. move me on last year. I've got a four-year offer from Cattle and Dragons. It's fucking yeah, 700K a year. I'm, if I'm, if I'm PSC, I'm strongly considering 100%. that. 100%. If, strongly. if the money's there, he's achieved everything there is. And you know, they he, need a half too. And let me tell you, there's no one who's had to put up with as much shit as well off yep. the field. The wee wee down the south of France is not going to have to worry about that. Yep. There's a straight replacement for Jimmy Maloney. That's what I mean. There. They need a half. They got the Mate, money. He, he would terrorise that competition. Yep. 
Um, I was about the 88th best halfback over here. I went over there and was in the <laughs> Super had 89 over there. <laughs> yeah. I was in the Super League dream team, so it's a lot easier footy. <laughs> yeah, it was. I think but, as well if I'm Pierce and if I'm considering staying at Newcastle, you've got to have a quiet word to KP and work out what he's doing, don't you? Absolutely. If, if, if KP's not committed, see ya. I'm done. I'll, I'll, I'd be ringing Craig Fitzgibbon, your mate, seeing if they need a seven, to be honest with you. So, but, like, okay, so... Put it this way, this is what I'd be weighing up from a few cynical, and I, and I don't know if I agree with this, but what does PC gain by staying here for another two years? And he, what, what, he, what could he lose if he stays here for another two years? He could potentially lose a big four-year fucking deal living over in Europe, um, or he can battle on at the Knights, or maybe sign, maybe sign a one- or two-year deal at the Sharks. I, I actually do think that if you put PC in that Shark side, that's a top-four challenging side. Definitely. Um, so, so you, what do you reckon? Stay or leave? Oh, a lot depend. Lot, like a lot depends on the yeah, how, how uh, the length of time. You're not staying here for one and two year deals, well, chipping and, away. And remember, in night, the NRL, knights you, have you're already gone. The, yeah, I mean, sorry, yeah, knights have already said to him. Like he tried to get. Remember, he tried to get a longer um, deal, and they basically just said, "No, nah, fuck yeah, he's a one year deal." So remember that. That's also in the air. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think from majority of players, it's. It's security at this time, you know, especially any time of your career, but especially at the back end when you, yep. you know, it's you know if this is pro- this will probably be his last contract he signs. Yep. So, I, think, I, think I think as well for Pearce, huge option south of France. Yeah, I reckon it's a genuine option. I mean, he, he doesn't have to take kids across the other side of the world or anything too. Like it's, yep. it's a pretty good. He's probably already got a couple over. Yeah, no, he's probably got a couple in hiding. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I think if if there's a genuine three to four year offer from Catalans. Mate, like, after like, put it this way: if if Knights have extended him for two years, like he wanted, then you could be like, there's some, there's a sense of like they're on the yeah. same page, they they've got a plan here together. Whereas because there was such a, a drama in that last contract, yeah. and and really the off field scandal, kind of not force Pierce's hand, but put him in a position where he didn't really have that much mm-hmm. leverage. Mate, again, if if, if Catlin's off in three to four years, you've already won a premiership, you won an Origin series. I, I would strongly, strongly consider it. Um, and if I'm Pierce as well, I mean, you look at his career, I don't think his character arc has ever been in a better position than what it is now. I think people appreciate Pierce now. Absolutely. Than, I mean, poor bastard. Got thrown into first grade when he was 18, son of an absolute champion. Mm. He's the halfback for the Roosters yeah, yeah. at a young age. Then they threw him into origin and said, hey, we can't get anywhere near this footy side. Let's see what this teenage... Like, it's just... Yep. The amount of, yeah. I feel very sorry for Pierce. And then... You know, not only did they pick him really early for Origin, whether you back it or not, they stuck with him mm. when he probably wasn't ready for it. Realistically, he probably didn't have the tr- he didn't have the troops around him for a teenager, a twenty one year old halfback, to be able to deal with what five immortals. Yep, for Queensland, oh, like, incredible. It's incredible. it's really tough on. And then of course he leaves the Roosters. Cronk walks in, picks up trophy after trophy. Like it's yeah. it's just been so tough on Pierce. Yep. But people are finally res- like, you talk to anyone now and. You know, Newcastle without Pierce, it's just a, it's a shit fight, and yep. yeah, I, I'd be happy to see Pierce leave now for the sake of Pierce, because I, yeah, I mean, I just, if he goes to another club, and I think, I think Cronulla would be perfect, but it's a matter of time till people hate the halfback all over again. Yeah, like, what's well, that's the most important? Oh, well, it's the head on the yeah. chopping block, you know. Mm. There's other for a long time was the most important, but certainly in today's game, fullback, you know, hooker, there's certainly other positions that. That can rival that, but yeah, if a piece is in a different stage of his life, he, he's he's probably achieved just about everything he's wanted to achieve. He's a hell of a competitor. One thing about him, he's extremely popular. Um, you know, he's, he got, went through a bit of stuff over the over the preseason, which I believe he shouldn't have to go on through publicly. It's, a, it's another conversation. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I agree. He can't be if yeah. But he he would f- fully still think if there's an opportunity and the money's right in in, in the NRL, I think he stays. Yeah. But you're right. If it doesn't stack up, mm. that that's a viable option to go over there. Yeah. Obviously, was, Jim Jim Maloney's retired from there, and there's a spot there mm. for, for him to walk into. Absolutely, and I just think that, as you said, like he's like obviously the Cooper Cronk is Cooper Cronk, but I think PC has proven in these last few years. I'm a high, high quality half. Of course he is. You can yeah. no longer doubt it. There's no longer this bullshit of like, you know, I got to a prelim with the Roosters and uh, look at the look at the Knights when he's in that side. Mm. You know? And I guarantee you, Cooper was at half the player he was when he won his titles at Roosters and he was at Melbourne. Mm. You know, that that yeah. was there. So, and obviously Cooper played a huge role in that, but 
It's a pretty decent team too. Mm. Tedesco come on board mm. and, and some other ones. So, you know, you know that, that would have stung Piercy, but you know, Piercy's achieved plenty of things too that oh, absolutely. other people haven't. I think he's the youngest player to 300 games. You know, that's right there. You've got to be resilient. You've got to be durable. You've got to be mm. mentally tough. And he's had his ups and downs, but like I said, he's a hugely popular member uh, in the NRL, really. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And that, that's like, I'm of the sentiment of like, I would love to see Piercy ride yeah. off into the sunset. Mm. Get his fairy yep. tale, get his contract, maybe win a fucking Super League over there. I wouldn't. What I wouldn't like is Knights to fucking go crash and yeah. burn next year, and then everyone yeah, turns on years. fucking because he's the easy scapegoat. Yeah. All the media articles. Anytime a journal has an opportunity to have a crack at fucking PC, yeah. like it's literally, it's Every like year. fucking beast to honey. Yeah. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe we just all spoke about nothing for a fucking five minutes because <laughs> it's not even a deal, <laughs> but. It, if I'm Catalans, I'd definitely be considering it. That's what Rugby League does get you talking about stuff that doesn't even exist. <laughs>The Unmistakable Creative gives you timeless practical wisdom for living a meaningful life. Listen to deep, meaningful conversations with creatives, misfits, rebels, and change makers. At their core, people don't believe that they're good enough. So they get into this whole fake it till you make it paradigm in order to gain the credibility that is going to lead to the attention that's going to lead to their success. Subscribe to The Unmistakable Creative wherever you get your podcasts. A cash recommends. recommends.